Tyler Crow, the plug power story continues, my friend. It's a long winding road and we're back at it. It's not a fun story to be telling for a lot of investors that, that bought into the growth story. I'm Jason Hall. This is The Smattering. We're going to talk about what's going on with plug power, the going concern notice they filed, the potential for bankruptcy that kind of indicates, and what investors should be thinking going forward about this stock. Before we, we get into it, just a reminder, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, go to our special link, go to fool.com forward slash the smattering. The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. Okay, Tyler. So this is a company you and I both covered for more than a decade at this point. And it became, I was a little interested at first and then started looking at the numbers and having some conversations with you many years ago. It became apparent their magic formula has really been selling the hype and raising capital, eventually burning through that capital and then selling the hype again and never getting to a positive cash flow bi operating business. Here's where the stock is right now. This is a good place to start. It's down 43%. We're recording this just after lunch on November 10th. So this is the day they filed that going notice, the first day of trading since it came out. So let's do this first. What For anybody that didn't watch the, the first video that I did, what did, what did Plug Power file? Yeah. So there are two things that it filed. Obviously, there's the press release that it, you can get on your their investor website, which it says some th some promising things about what they're doing with hydrogen and their hydrogen manufacturing facilities and stuff like that. But also said we're in a supply chain crunch for hydrogen. Not entirely sure what that means. It was a little big. But more importantly, there was a concurrent press release, or sorry, a concurrent filing with the SEC, which yeah, I think we should. I think we should find we should, on the website. We SEC has a website. Define the difference between a press release, which is issued and released, and a filing, an SEC filing. So again, we have the press release. We'll go, we'll go through this. But really, this is what they're saying is this is the transitory issue. Maybe some of the upside here. Here's the filing, right? This is the it's the marketing. This is the spin. Companies should do that, right? They Which should. It's they should. management's job. It's management's <laughs> job. Whenever you listen to a conference call, whenever you read a press release, management's job is to take what was what happened in the quarter and spin it in the most positive light possible. Yeah, take Everyone the numbers and tell a good story. Yeah, occasionally you'll get the surly old CEO who'd be like, "This didn't meet our standards." But it's really not that common anymore. It's very much more of a the management gets to go rah, rah, rah in front of the market, go in front of analysts and answer some questions on probably models for their anal for sell side analysts or something like that. But what is actually written in the SEC filing, yep. it's like the old show Dragnet, just the facts, man. It's there. There's no spin in what is here. This is a legal filing where they have to tell the state and nature of the company. And I'm going to is... dig in this because one of the things that companies are required to do is they're required to disclose material risks, right? Yes. They're also required to report a going, a file a going concern notice when there's, again, that risk that the company's current working capital plus future cash flows, anticipated future cash flows will not support its operations. They're required to report that. And that's what we're getting. Within right? the next 12 months too. All right, right, within the going concern, for a going concern, it's within 12 months. There's tons of companies out there that are burning through cash. Like we, we talk about a lot of startup companies that are at this state blowing that's through okay. cash. I mean, companies go public all the, I'm glad you mentioned that Tyler. I'm going to exit out the screen share and we'll pull it back up in a second because there lots of companies go public, raise cash, and with the intention, with the business plan that they're going to be consuming cash for a period of time as they're aggressively growing to get to a certain level of scale. That's a normal yep. part of a business's uh, cycle, right? I think it's important to point out, Tyler, this ain't no startup. Plug Power has been around. I think they were, I think they've went public in 1999, maybe? It was 98 or 99, right around there. Yeah. 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 So we're talking about a company that's been around for two plus decades. I'm going to pull the filing back up because... There, there's something in that filing that I think is so massively important that investors need to understand. So again, the going concern notice right here, they highlight that that their existing liquidity will not be sufficient to fund the business. They're saying that by November 9th, 2024, they're going to be out of their existing liquidity. Existing working, working capital is not going to be enough. Working capital of $1.3 billion. So basically working capital means easily think things on the balance sheet you can turn into money really fast minus monies that you owe to parties in the next 12 months, like your short-term debts, that kind of thing. 
So they're saying they have $1.3 billion in working capital. Here's the big one, Tyler. This is a company, we'll talk more about this in a minute, but accumulated deficit in its existence of $3.8 billion in this company in 23 years. Generally, after 23 years, companies have an accumulated, accumulated profit, accumulated earnings, and an accumulated deficit of $3.8 billion. So let's highlight what that means, because I think that's really important, because there are still bulls in this company. They're going to tell a story, right? They're going to tell a story, and they're going to believe a story based on based on this. This is the shareholder letter. And this is, like we said, this is the management spin. And it is, it's hard for me to say this because it's a company I've followed so long and it's one that I've, I'd say I'm pretty jaded against, but look. You're basing your analysis on the custom company's past right. result. What, what I meant by this is, is that there is a certain compelling component of the idea of this hydrogen future. I think especially in energy. I see it a lot because we, you and I have talked energy a really long time. It's something that people get so wrapped up in as the next great idea. There, there's debates all the time on the promise of solar and wind with energy storage or the use of hydrogen as storage of renewable energy that can have the energy density that we see with liquid fuels. All We're even deep. seeing some really innovative things in the steel industry right now where instead of using coal to you know, turn iron ore into steel, they're using hydrogen instead of coal. And then so instead of having carbon monoxide emission, they have water emissions. It's cool. It's amazing. Yeah. The chemical yeah. processes are cool. And it's a totally transform, if feasible, transforms the way we do energy. But there right. is what the challenge is, is with energy. It, it is so entrenched. It is so hard to disrupt. So capital intense yeah. to make possible. And right. as promising as it sounds, we hear about it all the time. We hear about, I don't know, I've heard of like molten sodium batteries and small modular nuclear reactors. There's so many things out there that we're begging for something new in energy for so long. And so when you hear a story like Plug Powers, this idea of we are going to turn renewable energy into hydrogen and it's going to be transformational because we can you know, make hydrogen fuel cells. We're going to change mobility in the world. And it sounds awesome. It sounds compelling. It feels like you're really making a difference in the world. Tyler, I will tell you, and I believe in parts of Plug Power's story. I do believe in it because we have seen wind and solar as power producing assets have come down and are will, will likely continue to come down in cost. If you bring them down enough, cheaper than natural gas, for example, which is the, the low cost leader for the most part. If you can get them cheaper to use as an energy storage mechanism, all of a sudden it becomes cost effective. Yeah. So I believe that part of the story that Plug Power tells will be true at some point. And we're probably maybe closer to that than we yeah. want to believe. The part that I don't believe, and this is the thing I want to highlight for investors again, because we pulled up that point, that part in the slide that where they're saying, I want to share it again, because I want to say it out loud, because I think it's important to hear it, because this is, the, this is how Plug Power survives, frankly. As Let me put it another way. This is how Plug Power shareholders survive, because the company can go bankrupt and go through that process. Watch the previous video. I laid out the case where the company can go bankrupt and reemerge and come through as a going interest again, but you as the business owner get zip because everybody else stands in front. You own a business and the business fails. You owe a bunch of people money. You know what happens? You don't own the business anymore, right? It's liquidated to pay those creditors. So the potential outcome for shareholders is if this actually happens. If it's these facilities that it's building to generate hydrogen actually do start generating and producing at full capacity and start generating sufficient cash flows, then plug power maybe can remain a going concern. They can remove that, that going concern notice. So that's like this possible outcome. But that's Tyler, what let's poke saying. holes in that. Why is that something investors should be very reticent to believe? More than anything else. And this is something that I think we've both learned the hard way. And I think a lot of people will learn the hard way with plug power and probably a lot of other investments that they make in their life. Sometimes it's not just the trend, it's the actual execution of the business. And time and time again, plug power has yet to show that it can actually execute the things that it says it's going to do. And that's, to me, the biggest flag of anything that has happened over this 23 years. We've mentioned it before. This is a company. It's not, this isn't some spring chicken. It's been around for a long time. It three or four times in the past 23 years have they had four consecutive quarters where they earned a gross profit, just a gross profit, meaning that yeah, I'm going to bring that up on the revenue. On this, that's the thing. So again, this is gross margin, right? So this is the first profit dollars you earn. And so 
right here, trailing 12 month gross margin was, was above 0%. So I'd again, right here. And then you got to go all the way back to before 2005 to see the other couple of times and only once above temperature. That's gross margin. You know what you haven't covered, Tyler? You haven't covered your home office. You haven't paid your salespeople. You haven't paid any of your marketing. You haven't paid your accountants. You haven't paid for any of the properties for all of those things. You haven't covered a single dollar of operating costs. So now let's look at operating margin. Again, the story is remarkably the same. The company has never generated a positive operating margin in its entire existence. Therefore, it has never generated a single dollar in positive free cash flow in its entire existence. Not one single time. So what that means, Tyler, is that if you're going to buy the line that those facilities, it's going through this transient issue and those facilities are going to be on line at full capacity, generate cash flow, all of those good things. You're betting on a company that in 23 plus years has never done it before. And I don't know if there's a bigger warning that I can issue for investors. I'm going to give you the last word. Hey, look, we've, we've heard it over and over again. This is the company has basically lived at the whims of investors for a long time by raising capital from investors through share issuance. It appears that management doesn't think it can raise that much capital anymore to meet its working capital needs. And that's why we're here right now. There's somewhere, there's a Hail Mary that says they can pull it off, but there has been no evidence in its 23 history to suggest that's the possibility.